I've been doing chemistry for a while and I wanted to make a video about a molecule which I was planning to make um, called ethyl acetate. This is the pathway that the reaction takes and it begins with a carboxylic acid. In this case it's ethanoic acid. The first thing that happens is that the oxygen of this carbonyl gets protonated. This proton comes from solution and it can come from a strong acid catalyst such as sulfuric or phosphoric acid or the hydronium ion which is present in acidic aqueous solutions. Once this oxygen has been protonated um, the electrons from this double bond go to the oxygen which makes a positive charge on the carbonyl. This opens the carbonyl to an attack from the alcohol, which acts as a nucleophile. Once the alcohol has bound to the carbonyl, um, the oxygen has a positive charge. So the electrons from this hydrogen-oxygen bond go to satisfy that charge and a proton is released. This proton can then go to protonate one of the hydroxyl groups of the intermediate and this ends up with a molecule which has a perfect leaving group of water. So the electrons from this bond go to separate off the water molecule which leaves as a leaving group and two of the electrons from this hydroxyl group here go to form a double bond which will reform a carbonyl. And once the double bond has formed, the electrons from this hydrogen oxygen bond go to satisfy the charge on this oxygen. And what you end up with, if you look at it, I suppose, from this angle, is a different molecule, which is our ethyl acetate or our ester. To a round bottom flask, I add 30 milliliters of azeotropic concentrated ethanol. which I made about three years ago um, by distilling ethanol um, to its azeotrope, which if you don't know what that means, it means it's about 95.6% ethanol and the remainder is water. Next I add 20 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. And once that's added, I'm going to add the acid catalyst, which is 3 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. Now once that's added, the reaction should begin, and it might even heat up a little bit, um, but it's going to be progressing very slowly. So to speed up the esterification reaction, I'm going to put the solution under reflux. So to do that, I'm going to have to set up my condenser. Now I have the solution set up for a reflux. I have the solution in a heating mantle and on top of the solution I've attached a condensing column with tubes for the water to go in and out of the column into this plastic bucket which has uh, my pump in it. I'm going to let the solution reflux for about half an hour and that should allow the reaction to proceed and already I'm beginning to smell the ethyl acetate which has this really sweet smell and before I even connected the condenser I was beginning to smell that so hopefully we should be able to get some out of this reaction. This is what the solution looks like under reflux. The vapors of the reactants are boiling off and going up into the condenser and then they're recondensing back into the liquid state and flowing down the condenser walls back into the flask so the reaction can continue without losing any of the reactants. Thank you. 
Now that I know that there is ethyl acetate in the solution, I'm going to separate it off by distillation. So we have the heating mantle with the flask attached to a fractionating column, which is not necessary, but it should increase the purity of the product. Then we have the still hut with a thermometer to monitor what temperature the vapor is that is coming over. We have the condenser set up sideways this time to collect that vapor and condense it. And the condensed vapor will run down the condenser into a round bottom flask, which is a receiving flask. I'm planning to collect about two thirds of the solution, and that should produce a fairly pure ethyl acetate, um, which we can then go on to purify. As the vapours from the boiling solution move up the fractionating column, the vapours condense to varying degrees depending on their boiling point. So vapours of a higher boiling point will condense first, and so as the vapours move up the column, it provides enough surface area for just the highest boiling vapors to reach the top of the column and move into the condenser. It was worth noting at this point as well that the strong smell of the glacial acetic acid has completely gone. This is most likely due to the fact that we used a high excess of ethanol to push the equilibrium of the reaction to make ethyl acetate um, towards the product side of the equilibrium. There's beginning to be a distillate collecting at quite a steady rate, and so once two thirds of the original solution has been carried over, I will stop the distillation and we'll move on to process the ethyl acetate to make it more pure. Now that about two thirds of the solution has been collected as distillate, there's still some impurities in it and residual ethanoic acid and ethanol and to remove those I have to transfer the solution to a separatory funnel. Now that the distillate is in the separatory funnel I can begin the washing steps. First I add 50 milliliters of saturated sodium carbonate solution. This should react with any acids either ethanoic or sulfuric, which distilled over with the distillate. The fizzing is the carbonates reacting with the acids, releasing carbon dioxide. The two phases separate because of a difference in density. The ethyl acetate is less dense and so forms a layer which is not miscible with the aqueous layer below. This makes it possible for us to drain off the aqueous layer to perform another washing step. The final washing is 50 milliliters of saturated calcium chloride solution. This should pull out any remaining water or alcohol um, left in the product. Once the lower aqueous layer is drained, what should remain in the separatory funnel is quite pure ethyl acetate. The washing steps are discarded and the product is emptied into a 60 milliliter bottle. 
The final yield of ethyl acetate was about 16 milliliters, which represents a yield of approximately 46.7%. This is quite a low yield and is likely due to the presence of water in the initial reaction mixture. The water most likely came from the glacial acetic acid, which was made using sodium acetate, which likely was not fully anhydrous when reacted with sulfuric acid to yield the glacial acetic acid, which was used in this reaction. Also, the ethanol which was used was also not anhydrous as it was azeotropic and so contained about 6% water. The water in the reaction mixture will have acted on the equilibrium reaction to form the ethyl acetate pushing it back towards the side of the reactants, meaning that the yield of ethyl acetate was lower. I definitely enjoyed making this and making the video, so I look forward to making more.